Chapter 17 After dropping Tommy off at school, only five minutes late in the end, Angelica decided to head straight out of town to locate the Natchez family home. She had no idea what she might do when she got there, but she felt that she should make her way along and see how it unfolded. The drive was slow. It was like a Sunday with elderly drivers taking their time over every junction, every roundabout, every turning. Angelica didn't mind. Some days she was in so much of a rush that she would sound the horn multiple times on a single journey. But that day she felt a calmness. Whatever would be, would be, she told herself. The radio station, Call FM, played relaxing music from her youth through to the current day, and the soothing effect of the laid-back tunes also had a part to play in her mood. On the way, she pulled through the McDonald's drive through grabbing a coffee for the journey. They didn't sell a great deal of coffee. The Spanish knew their coffee well enough to be a little more discerning. In fact, it was the quietest McDonald's Angela had ever been to. She went a couple of times a year, never a queue, never a rush. Fast food, it wasn't. As she sipped the scalding hot coffee through the tiny slit in the lid of the cup, Angelica looked at the streets of the town she had come to call home. Back in the northeast of England, the pavements would be thick with ice, the roads dusted with salt at this time of year. Although in Javier it wasn't warm enough to soak in the pool or the sea, it was a healthy 18 degrees Celsius according to the display on her car. She would settle for that at half nine in the morning any day of a February week. The traffic thinned out as Angelica reached the edge of town. People drove their cars in and about Javier. The roads out of town to the other nearby towns weren't used nearly as much. Once you were in Javier, pretty much everything you needed was at hand. Angelica exchanged her glances between the roads and the map on her phone. She took the road that led to Gata de Gorgos and the toll motorway that linked to the road network covering the whole of Spain. Angelica had driven for approximately three miles when she saw the scrub of land in the distance that she believed was the residence of Vicente Natchez, and until the night before, the residence of his daughter, Georgina. Angelica spotted that a small public road ran alongside the property and arched across to the right-hand side, as you looked from the front elevation. She slowed down to around five miles per hour, which wasn't an unusual speed to travel along this road at. The high shrubs along one side meant that a car travelling in the opposite direction at speed would be upon her before she had a chance to react. Luckily, the side closest to the Natchez residence was open allowing her to look in. As she had already expected, there were chain fences all around the land and large gates at the entrance. She wasn't going to get close. She hatched a kind of plan on the way over, thinking that she might pull into the drive if allowed, pretending to be lost. The gates put paid to that. Angelica drove slowly, following the road as it turned alongside the plot. As she did, Angelica spotted a man on the back porch of the house driving golf balls into the wasteland. She got a long look at the man. His age looked like it could have been someone old enough to father the young girl she had seen the night before. The man wore a dressing gown and possibly nothing else. It swung open as he hit the golf balls. It became obvious that he was wearing skin-coloured wide fronts. Angelica sighed a breath of relief and continued slowly along the road. The man hit the golf balls with an anger that sent them wildly into the air. They travelled a distance, but there was no accuracy at all. Angelica witnessed 15 golf balls fly into the distance. She got a last look as the man bent down to position the 16th. She was sure it was Vicente Natchez. He looked as close as possible to the man she had seen in the images online. Angelica threw caution to the wind in two ways. Firstly, she manoeuvred her car in the three-point turn fashion in the road to face the opposite direction to the one it had been travelling seconds earlier. Secondly, she decided that she would talk to the man she believed to be Vicente Natchez.